joy and my privilege hallelujah god taught me years ago that he can do without me hallelujah years ago that he can do without me so when when people begin to act indispensable they reveal the realm that they are functioning in hallelujah um, humility is not just a state it's a realm as a result of an experience the bible says in the year that king uzziah died i saw the lord and at the end of that encounter isaiah said send me i always ask this question who sent him from chapter one to five hallelujah so we thank god for what god is doing in this ministry i've had the opportunity to say this through the years please everyone who has the opportunity to attend these conferences don't take it for granted hallelujah it takes a lot of energy resources prayer fasting to put this up together hallelujah so receive and uh, i'd like us to just stand in one minute and honor the servant of god for putting this platform can you just appreciate him god bless you pastor Um, the immaturity of competition that happens in the body of Christ is a deficiency of the organization or an understanding of God's organization and his structure of operation hallelujah mm. because when you know what God has given you you will know what he has not given you and you will honor and respect those who carry it hallelujah it's a sign of great immaturity for a man to step into a place and begin to uh -uh. it is god that exalts men and he designed it in such a way that if you exalt him he put the glory in you so you will also be exalted he said father the hour has come john 17 verse 1 he said glorify now thy son to the end that thy son will bring glory to you hallelujah so we thank god for this morning and god is doing great and prophetic things in this meeting um i know that it's a wonderful thing god is doing and i pray that god will really open our eyes to see what he's doing let's just look at a scripture before we begin genesis 3 thank you jesus let the name of the lord be exalted from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same There's nothing as honorable as a man being powerful, mighty in the spirit, and yet maintains a statue of humility. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says, when you go into a place, it said, go and sit at the back. This was a prophetic language. We have too many people wanting to sit in front, Pastor. It says, sit at the back. That grace will speak and it will carry you to the rightful place. There are many people who are wrongly sitting in the front and they will be taken to the back it will happen we want more of you we want more of you jesus the more we know you truly the more we want to know you jesus more of you. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor just said something and I wanted to laugh, but I had to package myself because I was about to come up and preach. He talked about men of God who try to preach messages and say the miracles that they have done. It's a sign that you are not even making any impact if you have to announce it. According to Proverbs 31, he said, Let her walk speak for her at the gates. She will not speak for her walks. He said, Let her walks. Job said, In the day when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, the young men will see me and hide their faces. He said, The ancient will stand. Men have to be the ones to testify. The Bible says it was noise abroad that Jesus was in town. Didn't tell us who noised it. It was noise. 
so all this bragging about miracles i did this of course there is a place of declaring the works of the lord hallelujah but many ministers do that and they never tell you what happened now pastor they start giving you stories and useless encounters that happen i mean not useless in the sense but the attitude they put towards it something that happened by the mercy of god not their spiritual level god was in the meeting walking it's just that they were on stage while it was happening and they are convinced that it happened because of them because they can't reproduce it again it happened because of the hunger of the people or a general that was hidden in the crowd who was commanding an anointing and did not speak hallelujah if god opens our eyes to the realm of the spirit it will break our pride in ways we will not recover from it I'm always aware that when I stand to minister like this, I'm not impressing everybody. There are certain silent people. They may not talk, but they have an identity, a badge, a charisma in the spirit. Mm. So when you maintain that posture, you are able to communicate life in a way that will minister to people. Bless God for the wisdom that people are learning in this ministry. This is the kind of revelation that will produce mighty men. Hallelujah. Bible says in the cave called Adulam to David was brought certain weak and beggarly people but he began to make warriors out of them to the extent that the Bible begins to give us the chronicles of their exploits and said among those weak men came mighty men one who would fight and his hands will cleave to the sword and David said oh that I would drink of the pool of Bethlehem and these three mighty men they were men who have been trained apostles symbols see let me tell you something the proof that a man of god is great is in the lives and the success he has multiplied in others not how much he has built an empire for himself thank you jesus genesis 3 i also appreciate every servant of god in this place the lord bless you thank you once again 24 Genesis 3 24 or let's start from 23 therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from where he was taken so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life please look up i just want to explain a few things to us before we start the bible says that because man had you see the tree of life was meant to keep man in whatever state he was do you understand the tree of life sustains you in whatever state you are in and now that he had partaken of this of the forbidden tree hallelujah if he ate the tree of life again he will remain in that state and redemption will be impossible hallelujah and so the man was driven out from the garden and to guard the garden was not a gate it was a cherubim and a flaming sword so that whoever will get back into that reality must encounter these two experiences the cherubim and the flaming sword hallelujah and this is what happens when we come to prophetic meetings like this because you see it's one thing to see the kingdom it's one thing to know about the kingdom it's one thing to preach about the kingdom but it's another thing to enter the kingdom experientially and so many of us may not understand the degrees of transformation that are happening in our lives you will just turn and find out that you've been elevated in a realm and you've been made to have power with god and with men and when Daniel was traveling, the Bible says that when he was on his way coming, the prince of Persia, that spiritual wickedness that is over the territory called Persia, attempted to stop him. And because the organization of angels is so defined, they don't break ranks. It was not given unto Gabriel to fight, not because it does not possess the power, but he is the archangel in charge of service so he had to depend on the spiritual understanding of Daniel to keep on praying and as a result Michael was sent 
and michael came and prevailed over the angel and he was allowed he said and then i am come to give you understanding hallelujah joel 2 hallelujah blow the trumpet in zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain let the inhabitants of the earth tremble for the day of the lord cometh for it is near at hand a day of darkness and of gloominess a day of clouds and of thick darkness like the morning spread upon the mountains a great people now you begin to watch the description of this army a great people and is strong there had not been ever the like neither shall be any more after it even to the years of many generations a fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burned the land is like the garden of eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness yea and nothing shall escape them the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and like horsemen so shall they run like the noise of chariots upon the tops of the mountains they shall leap look at the structure of this kind of army like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble shall the strong people set in battle array before their face the people shall be much pain all faces shall gather blackness the bible says they shall run like mighty men they shall climb the world like men of war and they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks neither shall anyone trust another they shall walk everyone in his path and when they fall upon the sword they shall not be wounded they shall run to and fro in the city and they shall run upon the world they shall climb upon the houses and shall enter in at the windows like a thief the earth shall quake before these kinds of people and the heavens shall tremble the sun and the moon shall be dark and the star shall withdraw her shining 11 he says and the lord the owner of this great army shall utter his voice from before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong who executed his word for the day of the lord is great and very terrible who can bear it hallelujah the bible begins to give us a description of these kinds of people and it tells us that these are a kind of people the bible does not mention the leadership of this army it just tells us they are a people who are mighty and then after it keeps us in suspense for a while it tells us the captain of that army he said the lord shall utter his voice and this army shall hear in other words it will not be an army that is built upon a person or a doctrine it shall be a structure that answers only to one voice and one name hallelujah hallelujah and this morning briefly i would like to just take a little journey with us to understand how that god makes a man a son experientially hallelujah the journey the price the cost of sonship what does it take for man to possess such authority to be able to stand and legislate and listen please i'm not talking about um just power to heal the sick raise the dead cast out devil i'm talking of authority to command influence over territories hallelujah but this is the heritage of the sons in christ to possess an ability in the spirit the bible says the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord but the earth has he given to the sons and so we must be able to know how to take charge and take what we call dominion Unfortunately, what many people call dominion is grossly short of the description of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, when you get born again, you give your heart to the Lord. You come to a point where Jesus becomes um, not necessarily Lord of your life, but you acknowledge the fact that He is Savior. Hallelujah hallelujah when that happens 
then the Holy Spirit comes upon you, especially for we Pentecostals. You fall, you shake. Hallelujah. Ba, 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 ba. And then you get up. And then what happens from there? Because this journey is what has been misunderstood by many believers. And so they do not know how to align themselves to the Holy Spirit to continue the journey. Hallelujah. And in many um, circles, we just teach people that once you are filled with the Holy Ghost, the next thing is to begin to press to see one drop of anointing here and there, one word of knowledge, one gift. Did you know that the Bible gives those experiences a name? What does it call them? Gifts. What is a gift? You've collected one, so what is a gift? This is a minister's conference. What is a gift? No, 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 whatever you say, you are right. Don't worry. It's not a prophetic question. It's a direct word. It's a gift. <laughs> Hallelujah. A gift is an expression of love and kindness to you. Has nothing to do with your merit of it. Hallelujah. And so when the Bible says the gift of the Spirit, it's amazing that a man brags over a gift. Is that not interesting? He calls them what? Gifts. The only reason is in the church of Christ, we have had only few portraits that have moved beyond the realm of gifts. This is the reason why the central pivot and the attracting factor for the average believer is to get to a point where he walks in gift. But having give, given us a comprehensive description of this gift, then in 13 he says, Behold, I show you a more excellent way. Ah! That means there are other ways the Bible begins to give us a description in Isaiah 11 talking about the fullness of the Spirit the Spirit of the Lord the Spirit of this not a gift the Spirit of it hallelujah so when you get born again and you begin to walk with God the Lord begins to, it is in the character of God to build believers according to his name and according to dimensions. Hallelujah. You will not just stand what we call spiritual growth. Please write. What we call spiritual growth is not just praying in tongues. Spiritual growth means two things. Number one, your degree of conformity to the structure and the character and the nature of the Christ your degree of conformity for when you get born again i know that the bible says we are complete in him but um you see you must understand the prophetic nature of scripture and the way that spiritual realities are communicated because it is when like pastor said people judge scripture from the flesh and so they say the bible says we are complete in him there's nothing else that should be done but the Bible says there were many lights. So that's not a lie. But he said there were two great lights. And in the presence of those two great lights, we could not see those other lights again. Hallelujah. Many lights. So, spiritual growth is first and foremost your degree of conformity. And this is the reason why the Bible says when he led captivity captive, he gave gifts unto men. Hallelujah. First apostles and prophets, Ephesians. Hallelujah. First apostles and prophets and then teachers and evangelists and pastors. For what? Not building ministries and names and wearing suits. He said for the equipping of. He already called them saints but they must be equipped. Are you seeing that? He didn't say for turning men into saints. For the equipping of the saints. Comma. That they, the saints, will now do the work of the ministry. So what we call ministry is actually the equipping of gifts. The fivefold are not the ministers. They are the gifts that equip the body to do the ministry. Hallelujah. He said to the end that we all come into, that means there is an expectation. This journey is not a vague journey. You should mold into a portrait with time. Hallelujah. So if your Christian experience is not gaining a shape and a posture over time, you are following the wrong map. Hallelujah. 
he said to the end that we all come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ as a result not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and so spiritual growth measures your degree of conformity how much you have come into experiential alignment with the life of God his culture his principles his way of life your depth of oneness how much you have been able to intermingle yourself with the Christ number two spiritual growth is measured in how much you have been able to contact the authority of the Christ and to make it visible in this realm we call it the manifestation of the glory this is where we talk about authority not just power there is a difference between authority and power hallelujah authority is a position Power talks of force, the agency that gives strength to authority. Hallelujah. If this is my church, hallelujah, and assuming this lady is an usher, the moment I get married to her, she has authority. Correct? She may be weak physically, but she has authority. Many people in the body of Christ know power, but we have little knowledge about authority. And Jesus kept scanning through his walk in the earth to find out if any man would have that understanding. And then one day he found a man. The Bible calls him the centurion. And when Jesus, he, he beckoned on Jesus to heal his son. And Jesus said, all right, I'm coming. He said, no, 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 no. You do not need to come because I am not naive about authority. For I myself, I am a man who is under authority of the Roman government. And by reason of this position I occupy, I can tell a man, go, and he will go. I will tell another, come, and he will come. And if he refuses, then power. You see that? Power comes to enforce the strength of authority. So when you command a demon to go, it is by authority. The power of the Holy Ghost is the agency. The ministry of angels and all the spiritual dynamics that happen are the manifestations of power that compels obedience and alignment. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so spiritual growth measures how much don't tell me you are born again and all you have is character alone wonderful but that's not all so a lot of people give all kinds of excuses when they see the manifestation of the spirit in ministries like this and other great ministries they get angry and then they say well the most important thing is your character that's why i'm giving you the full definition because many people have excused it we come the sick come and they go back the oppressed come and they go back they ask the man of god why and he said the most important thing in the spirit is character that's wonderful but you ask jesus christ when john the baptist frustrated in the prison he sent his disciples he said go and ask him are you the messiah or we should expect another this was the same man who baptized jesus and endorsed him now as a result of his frustration he began to ask and jesus did not answer the man he turned and healed the sick casted out devils and said you go and tell john what you saw the manifestation of the kingdom commanding authority over territories becoming a principality over the territory that you function in when jesus stepped into gathering the presence and the authority that he carried shook that heavens to the extent that the madman who was a custodian that operated around that territory was the first person to meet with Jesus the Bible tells us that the madman lived in caves so who told him Jesus was coming those were the spirits that were responsible for the boisterous nature of the storm so when Jesus said Shalom he was not just speaking to the waters he was speaking to all the forces and when he stepped into Gadara there he met a man who began to negotiate with him because he knew for sure they were going to leave that man how can how 
how good will it be that you step into an environment and demons know for sure that their time has come to the extent that they didn't beg and say leave us they said we know we are going to go there's no controversy about that so our plea now is not leaving our plea is don't take us out of this territory because we have been assigned to function there this is going to be the character of these men called the sons of god they will move in signs and wonders and do more miracles unconsciously than they will do consciously. The new rule for greatness in our generation and our time will not be how much power you carry. It will be a different rule. How much you can keep territory, stand still. The Bible talks of Joshua. He said he looked at the sun and he told the sun, you shall not shift. I change geography. Whatever needs to be altered in the northern and southern hemisphere, let it happen because a sun has spoken. Jesus looked at Lazarus and from standing from that point he made a call that reverberated in Hades and took the spirit of one man and brought him back into his body that's a degree of dominion and authority you know why he called the name of Lazarus if he just said come forth everybody who had died would have come forth so he said i need just one person as an example i speak from hell lazarus and there was a ripple effect it shook the earth realm and entered hell and picked up that man called lazarus and brought him out and if you understand the way there was embalmment even if you were not dead you must die when they finish that embalmment if by any means you are a Nigerian and you get to pretend by the time they are done with that environment be sure that you are going to die and so how did Lazarus rise up from the grave and walk out because his legs and his hands were bound but that same voice brought him until he stood and he said lose the man and let him go see brothers and sisters let me tell you something all that we have seen is not all that there is I've studied revivals carefully because the Bible says follow them who through faith and patience it is a follow deceivers follow people who have obtained the promise not liars and hungry people whose God is their belly I've had the opportunity to study revivals and can I tell you something do you know that in the days of the Azusa streets the wealth revival DL Moody Revival, do you know that the newspapers, all the talk of the town was what God was doing in a city? To the extent that they had what they call a spiritual mayor. Alexander Dewe was a spiritual mayor over Illinois. He had the authority to say he was going to build a city called Zion. He was tired. Of course, that was not the best of a decision. Hallelujah. But we honor him for demonstrating authority over that city. He bought a property and put a new city in that place. When it was 12 on the dot, everybody in that city must stop wherever you are and pray. Wherever you are, you must stop and pray. He became such a force in that city. But right now, if you see a man's poster on newspaper, two things have happened. He paid for it or he has done something wrong. And they are telling the world, finally exposed this guy has done so so and so and so or come for my program signed by apostle joshua selman if your influence is not territorial you are not yet a son we have many local champions shouting in church doing everything but outside the immediate environment there is no operation of the kingdom they have not gained power in the heavens to regulate times and seasons and to compel all things to come into the obedience of christ a man called saint patrick in a land called ireland what a great man he shook that place single-handedly 
someone had been dead six months the son of the king and he said prove to me that this jesus is alive and they said i know one man called saint patrick they called saint patrick he said i will prove it to you he signed his name saint patrick on the grave he said open it up and they brought that guy alive true story not the type men of god lie in church he said i was there and 80 people fell under the anointing if you understand the move of the spirit it's impossible to know all those things are jargons a symbol of immaturity handling the word of christ craftily and then people clap what a shame and demons are saying ah, ah. but the other people that lived in those generations were hotter than this what is going on and at the end of it a pro protocol leads the man if i may proper beg all those things there must be a higher call i'm giving you a new taste a new appetite for spiritual things hallelujah so when a man begins to walk with god the dimension of his revelation and operation in your life by the spirit begins to switch because having enjoyed the gifts of the spirit and all of these things the first thing god begins to do is to put desire in you proverbs 18 verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself intermeddled with all wisdom suddenly you begin to become uncomfortable with status quo it's not an act of rebellion it's a higher call because according to ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 the bible says he makes all things beautiful in his time and he has put a realm in man called eternity he has put eternity in man and every time your walk in time is becoming enormous god will touch that realm and it will swallow up everything and leave you with a new hunger hallelujah so when you begin to walk with god listen to me he now begins to lead you through experiences and can i tell you something this is how men are even supposed to know they are called it's not just a choice it's not just by prophecy hallelujah over time as you begin to walk with god his dealings begins to mold you into a fashion and you see that this is an apostolic fashion this is a prophetic fashion this is an evangelistic fashion out of the depth of that experience a message will come out and that becomes your mandate and your assignment we have a the reason why our conviction in the body of christ is not strong is because it's not born out of experiences it's born out of story so we know the god of this the god of that which is wonderful but he wants to become your god hallelujah he said i will be their god and they shall be my people praise the lord so when you begin to walk with god he begins to bring you to a point of dissatisfaction please listen to me it begins to make you dissatisfied do you know pastor that the average christian in the church in nigeria is not even interested in going deeper with god the average christian hallelujah and that's why their lack of hunger for god has put so much pressure upon men of god if you don't have ac in your church you are in trouble after two days the people are packing out but the bible tells us no not the bible history tells us that in the days of catherine kuman people will stand by 3 a.m for a service of 6 p.m hunger the day you see people fill up a meeting a celebrity musician is coming or someone and the bible says because the people like it so so the men of god have been compelled and right now we have read all kinds of church psychology books that have taught us to convert our church into a business organization that is supposed to feed the appetite of people and we have ministries that have websites that you vote the message on sunday oh yes oh yes no no here you don't know because you are busy building yourself in the spirit but i'm telling you there are realities that happen so you vote it and there are suggestion box if for any reason you were grieved by the gravity of the presence of the spirit in that meeting it is within your power as a citizen of that country 
and a well-meaning member of that church to communicate your grievances to the end that an amendment be made for tomorrow and now you don't laugh because it is that same congregation that are saying the earth is waiting for the manifestation of sons after this morning you will know whether the world is waiting for you or you are the one who is waiting for us there will be a separation this morning so that you will know whether or not you see truly every time i hear people you go on air almost everybody saying a revival is coming and they are the ones who are corrupting the revival there is no sign of urgency there is no sign of preparedness you see to the extent that you see a man of god who just come on stage and say i'm fulfilled for my past so, so, so years in ministry Ah, there's almost no dimension of God I've not seen this is nice this is great and I, I pray for you my prayer for you is that God will help you to comprehend a bit of the things he's showing me and one general is seated in the crowd who is descending from a higher plane and saying Lord have mercy this is why when the members begin to open themselves to what god is doing in other places the geos become uncomfortable and then they start structuring messages out of their fear and loss to accommodate the pressures that they are trying to manage and they begin to put all kinds of devilish prophetic teachings and say what what i am this the shepherd in this house hear only me hear only this when you hear men of god begin to talk like that let me tell you the honest truth is an expression of fear and intimidation because the more the people begin to know the lies you are telling them they will start discerning it and they'll start asking questions with time mm. hallelujah oh pastor men of god do a this is a minister's conference different things there are churches when you come when someone is hungry the ushers say what is it are you hungry are you depressed come we have a kitchen here come and relax and then right now because of lack of fire and the presence and the glory of god people manage all kinds of things someone is sleeping around they say you know the construction of the human being is such that uh, with the complexity that exists in our society it is not unusual for a married man to have an urge for a lady it happens to all of us you see that spirit that universal kind of thing and so when anything happens they say forget the bible says uh, this and that someone has been smoking marijuana and the church places him on psychological withdrawal symptoms and we employ all kinds of psychologists and we say take it gradually we'll be giving you one one shot later half half shame on the church we brag about it when we go for conferences we stand before people and we even say i have this this and that and this is what it does because the bible says woe to any city whose king is a child woe it doesn't matter how many years you have been in ministry whose king is a child But the earth creation has been crying because you see they all have voices the birds the earth all of them listen don't 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 be deceived by the structure and the way earth is it's important for you to understand that this earth has voices the winds and everything the prophet will speak to the earth and say oh earth here here and the earth responds at least some of our american films and all the films that we have around have given us a description that there are certain things in these laws that we do not know hallelujah and creation keeps discussing and saying ah a prophecy was left that will be delivered from this bondage of corruption did you know that when hurricane katrina was going to hit three days before it hit all the animals there went away Oh yes they went away oh they knew it they communicated to themselves and said get out of this place man is at it again and because of his carelessness we're about to suffer something and the men were busy eating burgers and pasta and everything and all the prophets were there bragging and saying i saw it and i ran away why didn't you stop it 
I'm telling you, sometimes I've been praying. I say, God, let me be caught up in the spirit and meet the cloud of witnesses. I want to talk with just four of them. I want to ask them just a question, just a session, even if it's five minutes. What is your suggestion for our generation? Hallelujah. Is there a hunger in you for more? Now, and you see, when I talk about ministry, I hope you know I'm not just talking, I've said it earlier, I'm not just talking of pastor and all of this. Because some of us are imagining, God didn't tell me I'm going to carry a pulpit. The revival that will break out, let me tell you the honest truth, rejoin in his book, The Final Quest. Having caught up in the spirit, he begins to give us a description of this prophetic move and the structure and organogram. The revival is not just going to break in churches, it's going to be a systemic revival. That's why God is raising generals in media, in education, in different places. Our job is to bring in the presence and the glory of God to create an embassy through which heaven will infiltrate that system. And can I tell you something? It has been prophesied so we will not fail. For sure. For sure. This is what moves ministers who are sensitive to begin to put meetings like this. It is in response to prophecy. Hallelujah. It's a blow the alarm in Zion. And so let's, let's try to hurry up and establish something. When you begin to walk with the Spirit of God, the first thing that the Lord begins to do when He wants to walk in you is to begin to reveal your inadequacy to you. And let me tell you, that is the best experience that can happen to a believer. The Bible says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. What is the reward? Open your Bible and check. It's not an exam. No, no, check. I'm serious. You must know it. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is what? Sorry? I thought some people say, shall inherit the earth. Let me say, go and read your Bible very well. Hallelujah. He said, what does it mean to be poor in spirit? To be poor in spirit is not, it's a blessing. Many people have said, ah, the poor in spirit. They don't mention in spirit, they just say poor. Uh -uh. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. You know why? The word there is those who have come to a point where they are perpetually aware of their inadequacy. That's what it means to be poor in spirit. God designed us to be inadequate. It's a default posture. It won't change. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of God. That perpetual revelation of their inadequacy and constraint you know that song that says when all things that surrounds me become shadows in the light of you so in the light of him different things are swallowed up and it keeps you my prayer for god every time is lord perpetually keep me poor in spirit when that happens i'm telling you you will be rich in power and rich in grace that sense of satisfaction creates complacency and it ends your journey in the spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. So God begins to reveal your true state. And usually that happens at a time people are beginning to see the grace of God upon your life and people begin to clap for you. And because God loves you, he won't say anything. But that does not mean he's endorsing what you are doing. Listen, let, are you listening this is this is a this is a a minister session this morning and so you find out that you love god and you are walking but you can't see any lady and spare her and god seems to be silent and we call it an endorsement we say it's a confirmation that i'm the righteousness of god in christ jesus do you not understand that this was adumbrated in the parable when the bible says while men slept the enemy planted wheat among tears when the husband man came and saw it the people said should we remove it he said no 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 in other words the wheat is still growing and in the process you may damage the wheat and he says so let them grow that's why when you begin to walk with god he may keep silent over an issue in your life it doesn't mean he's not aware of it by the time you maintain certain levels of structure he will now say okay so let's review this Hallelujah. 
when you are about to go for one ministration that will make you king and kings or lord of lords god would say okay this is the time when we'll have seven days me and you and then when you go there you are shouting oh power god said we are not talking power right here i the lord test the heart and i try the reins and i reward every man according to my findings it's amazing do you know that the heart factor when god begins to talk about your heart begin to rejoice because you are ready to come into experiential sonship so you've started jumping oh hallelujah i'm blessed i'm great my life is this i'm a millionaire for jesus 10 million will come it will move me lord i love you i will buy the car and give everybody and god says you were here when they called for five thousand you couldn't buy a tape you couldn't buy a book i gave you an instruction to buy five thousand for someone you know let me tell you the bible says every man is right in his own eyes it's a description of the need for god to see that there's nothing in you it's, it's, it means that you need god hallelujah so god begins to break your pride because you see every man the bible says that um um the riches of a man is his strong city it's not necessarily money whatever you have that you treasure becomes your source of confidence when you work with god the first assignment is to take it away or keep it under suspense so that you have nothing else to hold on to and then he will lead you hallelujah a great general of god shared a story one time how that when he began to move in the anointing he was moving in power every time and he was happy whether he prays or not he found out that mighty things were happening in his meeting and so he was wondering why the fast while the prayer why all of this since the result seems to be the same samson slept with a harlot and what afterwards he lifted the city gate that did not endorse him we have many people who believe listen let me tell you something the mercy of god has boundaries are you listening to me this was structured in the tabernacle the bible tells us that the ark of the covenant had something called shibboleth above it the mercy seat when you shifted the mercy seat there were three things you see inside the ark number one the ten commandments two the rod of jesse the rod of aaron that bordered and number three the sample of the shoe bread that would not decay and when you looked at the law all that you would see was judgment and so rebellion begins to shift a man out of the jurisdiction of god's mercy and a day will come you will step in and what you will face is his judgment the psalmist tells us it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of god hallelujah so now you are walking great brother great sister you believe that you want to be prosperous oh god give me the anointing upon these people and see what i will do for you and god is looking at your heart hallelujah so your progressive dealings with god starts with a revelation right of the true state of your heart because you see this journey of entering into the kingdom of heaven is not an impartation it you you keep cooperating with the spirit it means you can stop on the way the day can come you can say god i'm tired to thy tents oh israel this is where i've come i've tried you won't go to hell but be sure that what you are seeing like moses you will see the promised land but you will not enter hallelujah god begins to reveal the state of your heart and so this morning god is going to reveal to us the state of our heart and then god will guide us god keeps telling me all the time son you have not even seen anything about my glory and my anointing that's why i get afraid when people begin to talk and say we have in our midst a great man of god hey i just imagine god listening and say remember while the applause are coming i'm hearing his voice louder than the claps he's saying remember what we discuss in the secret place compared to where you should go you are just one step out of the cave that's why you see when you have these experiences these songs that you sing a special number become an expression of truth so every time you sing it before people you communicate you reveal to them the overflow of your secret place and you are able to impart upon them the same fire that drives you hallelujah what is this that i see the lord shows me the same flaming sword that i spoke about 
I see a flaming sword, silver in color, and is rotating in the atmosphere. God is doing a work in this place. I'd like you to yield to what the Spirit of God is doing. Hallelujah. A flaming sword. I see two flaming swords now. Two flaming swords. And the number two is the symbol of a witness in the realm of the Spirit. Father, do what you are doing. Furnish us. Make us sons. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, Joel begins to speak of this army. And tells us the structure that this army will carry. But you see, that army you see in Joel is the end product. Are you listening to me? But then, it will not just come by claiming. You don't claim that realm. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let us therefore labor. The word labor in the Greek there is constrain yourself even as unto death to enter that realm. Let us therefore labor. He said, for there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Although they are the people of God, he said, there remaineth a rest. Hallelujah. Let me show you something interesting. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17. So we bow as we enter the throne room and we come at your feet for you are holy thou art worthy there is none like you for in your presence that is where we must be Lord we bow as we enter the throne room and I cast myself down at your For you are holy, you are holy, there is none like you in your presence, that is where we must be. For in your presence, that is where we must be. For in your presence, that is where we are changed. See in your presence, that is where I must be. In your presence, that is where I am changed. I am changed There is No one Like my God There is No one Like my God The one who can prune and change And refine There is No one Like my God Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed are you, for you come to us in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. In the name of our God. In the name of our God. You know why I 
sang a song I suddenly began to hear the sound of chariots mighty chariots mighty chariots mighty chariots and I was wondering suddenly a light was opened before me and that was why I began to sing learn to respond to spiritual things this is what is happening to you your organs of interaction and expression in the spirit are being exercised so that you are able to discern and walk with the frequency of the spirit you are able to move at the respiratory rate of the spirit so you know what impulse of the spirit is at every time but this is how you gain power structure in the spirit blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Jeremiah 17 you're still there verse 9 the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it just stop there look at me what we call heart listen by design the heart of man was designed to house God and his purposes hallelujah it's a realm he designed it it's not just your spirit it's his position in your heart hallelujah and so the holy spirit sits in that position or was designed to sit in that position so that he will become the third throne connecting you with heaven and administrating things there because all the way from scripture there are only two thrones because the third throne was designed to find expression and inhabit that man who is the temple of the holy ghost hallelujah and so for some reason as a result of the fall of man god and his counsel and his purposes fell out of man's heart hallelujah and several things began to gain position into that heart the fear of death being the greatest dread of man and the quest for sustenance being his greatest ambition this is the reason why doctors are rich they are attempting to preserve life is that correct everybody will pay any amount to make sure that he does not exit this earth because he's not sure of what he will face hallelujah and so several things through our journey in life our culture our environment our society mindset different ideologies begin to form ladders hallelujah in our hearts and then the thing that finally gets into your heart is truly your lord whatever it is if it's a woman that's your lord if it's money if it's position if it's anointing if it's ministry i don't care what it is if it's titles so when you get born again jesus i give you my heart be the lord of my life the only thing that was really valid at that point is the revelation of him being savior because that is purely on account of his grace and there is no works lest any man should boast but being lord of your life is a journey not a, an experience one day he said why do you call me lord lord and will not do there is a doing that proves his lordship are you following me please and so he begins to lead you through experiences that compels you to see the need for him as lord because you begin to see that the governing influence of his presence is not legislating every sector and facet of your life and as a result you will say oh god like the psalmist search my heart and try my thoughts and if there be any evil way in me lead me to the way everlasting and then god first and foremost leads you to his verdict about you that will be the first embarrassment you probably must have gotten as a great man of god that god tells you this is my conclusion about your heart your heart is desperately wicked they just gave you a word as the meekest man of god and god is saying your heart is this is my verdict i i am called alpha omega i don't need to pass through time beginning and the end a present tense in my presence i have done my analysis and here is my conclusion your heart joshua selman is desperately wicked in other words you you should lose the ability to trust yourself outside the message of god because you do not even know what you can become hallelujah david who would not kill saul 
an obedient young boy was at the wilderness hallelujah when when the prophet samuel began to cry and lament over saul the bible says that the lord spoke to samuel and said for how long shall you weep seeing that i've rejected saul as king he said but now take thy horn and go to the house of jesse and there anoint the next king and the bible says they had to go and bring david a smelling boy in the wilderness who was diligent with his hard work you would imagine that that guy would have no guile in him whatsoever to the extent that when they anointed him he went back to the wilderness he didn't even run to the throne that was a sign of submission it was a sign of diligence it was a sign of respect but you watch the analysis of david's heart when he had opportunity twice to kill saul he did not kill him he said i would not do this against god's anointed is that not what we will call the fear of the Lord? I mean, imagine a gentleman like that who would not love him. But little did he know that enshrined in his heart were tendencies and encodings that have not reached their kairos time to be made manifest. The Bible says when he became a king and began to lamp and he began to enjoy in the bounty of the palace. He said when men go for war, when kings go for war, David remained because no man at that point no man would talk to him the real content of his heart began to find expression and one morning while he meandered across his royal corridor suddenly it was like a dream but he looked well and he saw a lady bathing and he said i am king i beg no man i toast no lady I have no respect for any remember the language of kings that we discussed yesterday i have no sorrow i have nothing and he said go and catch that girl and bring for me you see in ancient times they didn't toast there's nothing like i'll answer you after three bits answer there and now or they will execute you the king did uh, read ahasuerus i mean in, in the book of esther as Ahasuerus said gather them when he chooses one he said the rest go you understand what that means so david take someone's wife where was god at that time where was his fear for god a man who wanted to build a temple for god what suddenly happened to the extent that he called uriah at the war front to come back and he said please go and uh -uh, all work and no play makes jack a dog boy go home and rest and uriah said me i can't go home i will sleep with my wife or do something and that is forbidden for great men because there is time for battle and he was angry and he wrote a letter he gave him his own death sentence he killed him hallelujah and when uriah died guess what when Bathsheba got pregnant for the first child david cried 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 he didn't even say oh yeah now just go to your husband he, he was i hope you know she was still the mother of of solomon i the lord while you are rejoicing and say lord if you give me this anointing or if you give me this church just give me this power and you're even kneeling down and crying yes and mucus are all coming out of your mouth the lord the word of god which is a person not just a book is discerning the thoughts and the intents of your heart are you following me now There are certain languages that people use see when you go through certain processes in the spirit you are empowered to discern those who have not gone through it nobody will talk jargons for you on stage no matter what he wears because you can stand and say uh -uh. you know a man that has passed through that stage because when you go through it you are empowered to guide others through it this is why a lot of men of god have no message when they are counseling people they have not gone through certain experiences that can prepare them to relate with the dealings of people so someone says i woke up in the morning and i had a dream i died and then i came back to life i said ah the devil who told you is the devil but when you have interacted and done business in the spirit you can recognize and say ah this is a strange sound but then i know this sound because it's a sign and a symbol of the experiential dealings that god will begin to do in you he's bringing you to a realm in the spirit called galatians 2 20 when you'll be left with nothing but the life of christ he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me and this life that i live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god and 
a possibility exists to jump classes and even graduate yourself by yourself award yourself give yourself certificate and employ yourself in the spirit and god will just be watching but those classes and lectures you missed i assure you if it is god you will take them again no matter how far you go you will take them again it's embarrassing in the physical realm to sit down in a primary school stool you know these small chairs you used to sit down on this dark wooden one but many people are coming back to sit down there because they have jumped many classes in the spirit i assure you if it is the lord almighty don't you think god is just in a rush he can wait oh yes he can wait if a whole generation will not be ready he will keep the suspense and zip up the story of that generation until they pass and he will raise a new people god can wait mm, he can wait if we understand this we'll know that it's not as if god cannot do without us i assure you he can wait he waited until the generation of joshua and caleb perished and passed away only two of them from that generation made it to the promised land the rest died he waited till new people were born and then he told all the people moses told joshua and the rest, he said sound a warning and tell them what happened to their fathers so that if they mess up the same thing can happen to them let me tell you something we have experienced many dimensions of god in the body of christ but we have lacked a major dimension in the hebrew is called yirat adonai the fear of the lord the spirit of reverence it's not supposed to scare you it's supposed to bring you into the the point of sonship you see sonship does not just talk about rights it talks about responsibilities hallelujah he said an heir as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave though he be lord of all he said boys under tutors and governors until the time appointed and so if you do not step into sonship the element in this life and things that are orchestrated will begin to win you and train you until you come to that point where you have a testimony of the lord for yourself so the lord begins to work with you please follow me because this is what god is doing in our hearts suddenly you go to pray and for three hours you are praying you are asking for anointing or you are saying lord i came to talk to you about my relationship i've been talking to you you are keeping quiet and god will say all right begin to write one lost and you say god what i say is a right two bitterness three you have an evil tendency to the extent that you can kill a human being right and i say lord it's just because i'm obeying you i know that this is not me you are talking about god is saying you right i want to make you command power in the heavens the first thing is it begins to embarrass you you can choose to bind that spirit away and depart from the presence of god and say i don't like this kind of deal see i like the one that tells me i'm already complete i'm okay i'm fine you see the bible says if your strength fails you in the day of battle he say your strength is small there are many people whose strength is small and the angel tapped elijah and he said eat for the journey is far he ate and he ate a little and he slept again the angel tapped him he said i know how far you are going you eat because the journey is far and the bible says he went in the strength of that bread 40 days journey let me tell you the preparations and the dealings and the furnishings that god is bringing right now if we do not yield ourselves to it the lapse of it nobody you will not have time the responsibility upon our generation is enormous you may not have certain times to build yourself this way the only way you will do that is to opt out of the army and remain at the back hallelujah search my heart see when you begin to pray like this it's not a lack of the understanding of new creation realities it's a higher realm based on the light of god that you see there is a dimension of god that you will see that you will shout unclean without your brain coordinating your mouth will begin to confess it's not a sign of weakness it is an expression this is how the Lord begins to deal with people. Are you listening to me?
for many years i preached i moved with power i did unusual things with anointing and grace and glory many realms that i see people bragging about today by the grace of god these are realms that other people had conquered years before and then god said let's begin to walk now at the apex of this glory god said all right let's get back to the secret place and listen to my own judgment you have had enough applause from people and when the lord began to x-ray my life i felt like dying i was ashamed of myself and i broke down in my pride and pompousness <laughs> hallelujah and then when jesus appeared to me he left an imprint of his glory when i saw him i felt ashamed of myself i thought i was not born again see all this drama and story people talk i'm telling you when you see him as he is you will be glad that you were alive number one number two he will not need to talk he will answer questions and create more questions that's what will let you know that he see ezekiel called him a wheel inside a wheel that he didn't know how he said how with like a wheel inside a wheel he will satisfy your current hunger and leave you with a greater one hallelujah i saw him in his glory i know that he's alive and i know that he's loving but I know that he can be a terrible God. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. I've said it. Every time I see people say Apostle Joshua Selman, I just remember Apostle Smith Wigglesworth, Apostle St. Patrick, Apostle Smith, Apostle Alexander Dewey. And then I just put myself in the picture and feel so ashamed. And I just draw back in sackcloth and ashes and said lord a day will come i will get there i don't condemn myself but i won't lie to myself either tonight some of you will need to stop lying to yourself and say i know god is helping me but i've not gotten there yet lord let's start this journey some of you after tonight's meeting will say lord truly just x all this nonsense and let's start a correct journey again because we have been building nonsense after our foundation we started putting zinc although it was red span you would take away that zinc and start building and call the carpenters. You say, who are these for?